Hey there everybody, this is Spiraling Helix, and welcome to my new Let's Play here, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. And just so you know, in advance, Final Kingdom Hearts Final Mix is for the PS3, and this is actually a HD port of the Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts. So there's some differences between one and up from the PS2 and then this one on the PS3 but let's get right in start a new game and hit, there are three different difficulties as beginner definitely not doing that because that's probably too easy there's just plain old normal mode but I know the game a bit I've played it a fair bit so I think I'll do proud mode bit of a challenge uh, ooh, camera settings. Let's just go auto, because I think, and yes, vibration. Proceed! Because I think you can change the camera while you're still playing, even though auto is a thing. Anyway, loading. I feel like it loads a bit longer. There. Ooh. So, amazing cutscene right here, but I'm pretty sure I have to talk over it because of copyright reasons. I'm not even gonna bother trying not talking over it. But, one, this game is absolutely amazing. The whole franchise is, but it's very confusing, and just so you know, the people who made this, Squaresoft, not Squaresoft, Square Enix, they're the same guys who made Final Fantasy. Is any of this for real? Or not? Should have been quiet for a bit there, but yeah. Same thing as- same guys as Final Fantasy and all, so it's a cross between Final Fantasy and Disney. But don't let the fact that it's a Disney game put you off, because it's the best one there is. Hands down. And I love this soundtrack, but I have to talk over it. Oh, also, I can't find it on Spotify anywhere, but that's not the point. So this game, I actually played the second one before this one. So go, b going back to this one was quite shocking in some regards, but it's still an amazing game. The story is amazing. The gameplay, it's even better in number two, to be honest, but it's really good in this one. And even though Disney is the whole thing in it, they did a really good job. Like, just the developers did an absolutely amazing job incorporating that. Um, I was gonna say other stuff, but I can't think of it. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, mind blank. Oh. Um, so in this, that's the three main characters you can see on screen. We'll get into them. They're just saying, there is a whole lot to go into with this game. This game is packed with content. For the sake of the Let's Play, I'm gonna try and cover most of it. Actually, or try and cover all of it, but I might not accomplish all of it, because there's some very, very tough things, and I am on proud mode, which is already hard enough as it is. The way... This works is that there's okay so the beginning of the game which we're coming into now it's got tons and tons of stuff that will actually determine how the whole game will play out and we'll see that in just a moment but basically I'll try and cover everything in the game I'll Give everything a shot. Later in the game you do need to do a fair bit of farming if you actually want to get things going and actually defeat things. But let's get right into the game here. With our protagonist that we don't even know of yet. The door is still shut. Now, step forward. Can you do it? 
Look, it's telling me how to move because it's not. It's different than any other game. You, it's telling me to move with the analog stick. I'd like to see a game where you don't move with the analog stick or D-pad. Power sleeps within you. If you give us form, it will give you strength. Food's well. This here. Press circle to jump. Yeah, it's not X to jump actually, it's circle. Now this here. We, uh, that's just terrible. I don't like the camera right now, but I can't access my settings. So we have the choice of a sword. The power of the warrior. Invincible courage. A sword of terrible destruction. Is this the power you seek? Uh, no. We also have this, I'm gonna say staff, the power of the mystic, inner strength, a staff of wonder and ruin. Yes, staff, got it right. Is this the power you seek? No. And over here, we have a shield. The power of the guardian, kindness to aid friends, a shield to repel all. Is this the power you seek? No. Well, we'll get into that. So, what you do here, just this moment here, can determine how the whole game plays out for you. And it'll be different depending on what you choose. So, I'll try and cover this all. I'll show up a table of what happens. But the first thing to take note of, whatever you pick here, if you pick the sword, you'll get plus two strength. Basically, you do more damage to enemies. If you pick the shield, you'll get plus two defense. You take less damage. And if you pick the staff, you'll get plus one MP or magic. And, just a moment. And, sorry, just had to reach over and grab something. So that will enhance your magic. However, this game tells you a lot of things actually no sorry this game doesn't tell you a lot of things that actually happen when you pick any of these three you'll have a different set of abilities throughout the whole game now abilities are something that you can equip and aid you throughout like give you different skills and stuff some passive some you use but you'll get different abilities and I'll show them on screen now basically the, I think the abilities are all there for each set, but they come at different levels for Sora. And I might be wrong, but between each of these different level numbers that are showing now with the abilities, there are actually other levels you gain abilities, but they are the same across all three. So this these tables just show the difference. And you're not, we'll get into all of these abilities later as we get them all. If we get them all, I doubt I'll be going up to level 99. But, with each of these here, the sword, the staff and the shield, will give you different abilities throughout the game. Now, personally, I picked the shield, and I actually think, because trying to make this as balanced as possible, if I go strength, like pick the sword, I might... It might seem like everything's easier to kill for me compared to any of you who might be playing along. And same goes for MP. I don't want to have one extra MP the whole game through because I picked that. I actually want to pick the shield mainly because the two defense is great. It means I don't die. You get a lot of abilities early on that stop you from straight up dying in one hit, which is amazing. But one of the abilities you get quite soon is, there's two of them, a scan, which lets you see how much health an enemy has, which is great for everything. The staff does give you it quicker than a sword, however, another ability called Lucky Strike, your path is set. Now what will you give up in exchange? Now Lucky Strike, basically enemies drop items more frequently which is better in terms of completing things so we'll pick that one as it's quickest with the shield anyway now we have to give up something 
Now, if we give up the sword, you will lose one strength. And if we give up the staff, instead of losing one MP, you'll lose one AP. AP being ability points, and that's what you use to equip abilities with. I'm thinking of getting rid of the sword. Usually I get rid of the staff, but actually I just learned earlier it was AP and not something else. I value my AP a lot. So I think I'll give up the sword. And another- sorry, you've chosen the power of the Guardian. You've given up the power of the Warrior. Is this the form you choose? If you didn't want to do any of that, you can just say maybe not choose again. But, basically, I'm going to drop my strength in, in a strength for defense and abilities, as early on in the game, in the first world of this game, I will be farming a whole lot of enemies and ex or not even enemies I'll be farming a whole lot of XP just so I can be at a safe rate throughout the game because the game can be hard enough without playing on proud mode so I'm gonna just farm a bit towards the beginning I'll probably cut that out or speed it up really fast you've gained the power to fight fighting with the shield look at how Look at how bad it looks. Look at how bad fighting with a shield looks. It's terrible. But it's definitely the best one to choose in my opinion. Another with this game... Oh, here we go. HUD. The green gauge displays your hit points or health. I'm going to call them health points. Because, let's face it, it's way better. If you run out of health, you'll be taken to the continue screen. The blue gauge shows your magic points. MP. Magic is still a mystery to you. Basic, there will be times you have to fight. Why is that off screen? Keep your light burning strong. I actually want to see if I can change that. That's weird. It was only that text. I don't think anything else is off screen. Oh well. So, here I'm just mashing the X button because that's basically all I can do. And you could see, just as I defeat that enemy, two things appeared. You gain EXP. By defeating enemies, you saw like the 1p appear in midair. With enough, you gain level. Furthermore, defeated enemies sometimes leave items behind. You, you saw that green orb, that replenishes my health. Different things, restore health, magic, and then you'll get some more collectible sort of items that you can use behind you. Generally, you're automatically target the target the enemy. But you can lock on with R, R1, which is absolutely great. I think you can also switch somehow. Yes, you can switch with L2, it looks like. And that's a good tactic, like... Uh, okay, these are the first Heartless, you'll, we'll see. It's called Shadow, we'll get into them more. They're really annoying because they duck down beneath the ground and you can't hit them for a bit. Anyway, this game is just like, it's got a lot going on at the beginning that you don't even know about if you haven't played it. So that's what I'm running out of breath. Anyway, moving on. Seems we're safe from the darkness for now. Kingdom Hearts has a theme of light and dark you'll see quite a lot as we go on. Just so you know, it isn't a silent protagonist. He does talk, eventually. This is field icon, blah blah blah. When you see a thing there, the triangle button examine, you can do something. You also have a question mark or an exclamation mark in the thought bubble. Hmm, I can't open it now. I was a bit late with the text box, but oh well. Treasure! And it has various things, now it says open. It's worth noting that in the PS2 version, you see the command menu on the left, it's pretty empty right now, but also you can push crates. You almost never push crates in this game, but you can do that. Push, 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 there we go. You can do that. You can also destroy them, which is what you have to do here. 
and you'll get items sometimes. You'll never get items in crates, really. I don't. I think that's like the only time you do. You can also log on to different items. Here's an example of switching. Let's just pick this up and throw it. Or not throw it, I guess. And it's gone. Oh well. But basically, the command menu, we now have items. We have a potion we can use to heal. Still can't check our menu, but in the original Kingdom Hearts, instead of having the triangle pop up, you'd have it, the whole bottom bar in the command menu would have examine or something and it would stay blank the rest of the time. And or you'd have to, like, you'd have to scroll down, you could do that with the right analog stick because the camera worked differently too. And then you select it from there, which is really annoying because, like, let's say you're fighting things. Hold on, the door won't open just yet. First, tell me more about yourself. I, I've played this game a few times and it's really weird. I don't get who's talking to you here. Press the select button for first person view. We will probably never use that again. But we have three people here. Now we can talk. What are you so afraid of? Now, I'm gonna say being different. Being different? Is that really so scary? These three people here, before I ask the other two, these three people, actually I'll ask them anyway, what's most important to you? Being number one? Obvious, no. Friendship. Friendship. Is friendship such a big deal? They'll always say, like, is our prized possession such a big deal? I think. And this guy with the beach ball, we're gonna get used to him, or certainly I will. What do you want out of life? To see rare sights, to broaden my horizons, or to be strong? To broaden my horizons. Now, this might not actually be what I think, but you're afraid of being different. You want friendship. You want to broaden your horizons. Your adventure begins at midday. Keep a steady pace, and you'll come through fine. Sounds good, or on second thought? On second thought, you can go back and ask questions again, because this text, the text box here, your adventure begins at midday, blah blah blah, this determines the experience you're getting throughout the whole game. Basically, you will have, your adventure begins in the morning, which is the, if you pick majority of the top three of those questions, and that will give you more experience I think, I don't know exactly, but I think it's below level 50, and then you'll gain less above level 50. At midday, it'll be steady throughout the whole game, which, which is why I'm choosing this one. Obviously, I prefer it. And then there's in the evening or in the afternoon, I think, which is the bottom three options, majority at least. And that will mean you get less experience towards the beginning of the game, and you'll get more towards the end, at least compared to this option I'm choosing here. Anyway, the day you will open the door is both far off and very near. There's a lot of talk about opening a door. Some music coming in that's pretty cool. And more of this strange place. Not much to do here, let's step towards the light. Press the start menu to... Press the start button to open your menu. Oh, by the way, you can skip cutscenes in this one. You couldn't do that on the PS3 version. Which is actually so helpful if you... Like, seriously, this game can be extended like... I don't know exactly how long, but I'm going to say at least 30 hours, just by cutscenes. Got to kill some of these creatures. You can see, in proud mode, I'm already taking a fair bit of damage, just from one hit. These are the weakest creatures in the game, by the way. And if you are playing along, you may notice the controls are very clunky. If you're not playing, well, take my advice, the controls are very clunky right now. At least, this character moves very clunky. And... Cl 
clunky, clunky, clunky. Anyway, it's it's very weird to get used to, but as you develop more throughout the game, as you level up and get more abilities. Menu. We have a menu, guys. But as you level up and you get more abilities, um, uh, basically, your movement becomes extremely good. You can actually fight really well. And it gets interesting. Items, we've got potion, equipment, just a dream shield, question mark, question mark, question mark. Abilities, there is one right here. Start, you automatically have it when you start. It might only be on proud mode. It could be wrong, but this is only in final mix. I am not going to equip this because this ability doesn't actually tell me, doesn't. Entire, oh, right, yeah, blah. Entire party gains no EXP. I want to level up. Basically, doing equipping this ability, you gain no, no EXP. Customize, status, I'll sort this stuff out later. This here is a save point. Blah, 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 hit the triangle button to save. Your game, go back to the main menu. And one other thing we'll get to in a bit, like, well, a fair bit later into the game, but what I was trying to say here, abilities, EXP zero, you'll gain no EXP, but against bosses you will be a lot stronger. I don't know the exact stats, I've never done it, don't want to, that's my other profile, I'll probably blow out the words there, or something. But let's save a new file here. Saving. 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 Checking. There we go. New file there. Already been 20 minutes just trying to talk about all this stuff. And you can see there's also party. No available party member. But with that, we've got a whole lot of information talked about done. Just a few other things in the early game to talk about now. But with that, we shall ascend up those stairs to that other tower. Find out just what is going on in this dream place. Anyway, see you guys next time. This is Spiraling Helix signing out. Bye bye.